Golden Grail is up there. I have to go find it. Oh, God. I have to reach it. Where's Ghost? Oh, God. Ah! Hello, I'm Devengers, Devengers, Devengers. No, it's West Coast Avengers. Even my parents can't get it right. Welcome back to the West Coast Avengers, your source for this guy, me, Dave. I'm going to have to squash this now, but there will not be an East Coast Avengers. But if you're just joining me, I am Dave. This is my show. I am a collector, a seller, and a comic book enthusiast. I'm going to take you on all these adventures. Well, unfortunately, this one's going to bring us to the swamps, but that's besides the point. Every Wednesday, West Coast Wednesday, Eve, my comic book auction and claim sale right here on YouTube. Every Sunday is Sunday, sit down, Sunday, sit down, we'll sit down and talk about comics. I promise I won't sing that much more in this episode. I hope. You can buy some of the stuff you see, and if you don't want to buy it, you can just come and hang out. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe if this is your first time. I just got back from one of my least favorite places in the continental United States, Florida. And I'm not going to bore you with why I don't like Florida. I'm going to show you. <laughs> so I was down there for a little bit of the uh, visiting with the parents and an event for my old job. Whenever I travel, I want to bring you comic book content. So I went to about 15 comic stores in Florida and two garage sales. I shot as much footage as I could. I went to a bunch of shops in Orlando and a whole bunch of stores all around the West Palm Lauderdale area. But let's roll the footage. First up was the Coliseum of Comics, which is a chain in the Orlando area. And honestly, it was a lot of fun to dig around. Just taking a look. Smelled something real good in this book and let's see if I'm right. Oh yeah, look at that. A Mark Schuller variant. Just sitting here in Florida. I guess I'll have to buy it. Well, we're going to take a look again because I think I've found some more marchers. Variants. And this time it's Todd variants. And you guys know what I say. When you see Todd, you buy Todd. And uh, let's see. Yes. Same of this story again. Coliseum Comics and Games. That's where we're at. Got some time in between work. I'm going to check out a comic store called Gods and Monsters. Blah. place could be cool. <laughs> now, I keep in mind, and you, the viewers, should keep in mind, Orlando is home to Disney, so it's a very heavy tourism area. And most of the comic stores and just the stores in general there are geared towards tourists. That being said, there's plenty to look at. There's a lot to take in. There's some deals to be had. You get a plethora of merchandise between comics, cards, toys, pins, all that type of stuff. But for the smart collector, you know what you should be paying, and these stores are usually charging 10 to 25% more. It's an epic illustrated one. Now, this was something I did not expect to see in this shop. This was that limited edition Hellboy Ouija board. I believe it's signed and numbered by Mike Mignola. Uh, it was expensive, but rare. Let me get to the Star Wars section. Bubble Frank. Smato's in there. One of the cool things about this store, Gods and Monsters, is they had a bar in the back of the store that had a completely different vibe than the rest of the entire store, and probably somewhere I would hang out if I lived in the area and I was still drinking. Going to find a garage sale near my parents' house in Florida. Gonna see what it's like to hunt over here for books. Here I am, my first Florida garage sale ever. My parents have been living down here for 15 years, but I never do garage sale hunting. And the guy just opened up his garage, so let's get ready to rumble. Ooh. 
literally 60 seconds later, and there was eight short boxes in there, and the guy was very friendly. He was telling me that um, he's selling comics for his buddy and handed me a pile of printouts from eBay with prices for stuff that was, like, not worth money. Anyway, Florida, I don't like you. I never have. The state saying for Florida should be, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Yeah, yeah, my wife's like, what is this? What's the art? This was past, present, and future, a store in Palm Beach County. I think they're a pretty well-known store. Very large, an extensive, extensive library. Back issues, new issues, and statues. A very well-put-together store. But once again, I just was not in love with the prices. I couldn't really tell what some of the quote-unquote wall books were priced at because they didn't have prices on some of them. So I wasn't sure if they were hiding the price tags or if they were going to look them up. So I wasn't even going to bite. Here was their big ticket area with their statues and their wall books, but those portfolios really interested me. There was a Barry Windsor Smith and a Frazetta portfolio, but I asked about pricing and they went straight to eBay and there was nothing I can really say to get those portfolios at a price I wanted to pay, so I didn't buy them. This store was called Docking Bay 93 and I enjoy digging through this store. Lots of back issues to look at and dollar books. The owner was really friendly. Lots of trades. I spent about 45 minutes there. Definitely worth your time just to check it out. Here comes the next one. Phil's Comic Shop with two P's and one E. Phil's Comic Shop was a store after my own heart. Tons to dig around. I could have spent hours and hours here. The owner was busy, but he did answer a bunch of my questions and pull out some stuff for me to look at that was behind the counter. Totally would go back here. I don't think I have this. Right here, we see the Devenger in his natural habitat, looking for the jewels hidden inside the amazing Spider-Man books found in the Bronze and Copper Age. He uses his nose and his eyes to sniff out and look for the shininess of the jewels. Will he find any? That is unknown. The most disturbing window goes to Tate's comics. What the... Uh... I love it, and I hate it. Besides the crazy window display, Tate's had me really conflicted. Some of the prices there were great. The selection of things they had was beyond great. I think they had one of the best selections of all the stores I'd been to. But, you know, with large stores and a lot of employees, you tend to look at the prices and you tend to say, Damn, that's a lot of money. And that sign that they have up there kind of says it all. All in all, some of the books I saw, I was seeing 
literally for the third or fourth time on that trip, and the prices just kept going up to each subsequent store I had gone to. Arnold. It's funny, I've seen this magazine for three different prices down in Florida. 10, 20, and 25. It's a great cover. Magazines, card sets. So it was 20 at the last store. Now it's 40 here. That's 50. And those cups. That X Men cup's pretty cool. $900 for an unopened Marvel Universe Series 1 box. you're looking at here has to be the craziest shit I've seen in a long time. Bob's News and Bookstore, the only newsstand left possibly on the planet that has comics and they're all valiant. Right. Hi. The store that I had the most success at was the Coliseum of Comics and it was one of their, I believe, eight locations. I went with my coworker. He shot some of this. I was explaining to him beginner ins and outs of comics. But what I did find in that shop, their bins, they had a, a lot of bins. I started looking through the Amazing Spider-Mans, which is always my first go-to when I go to a shop. It, it gives me a good bearing of pricing. It gives me a good bearing of what they have. Amazing Spider-Man's the litmus test of comics. I started finding Mark Jeweler books. I was explaining to my buddy Jeremy what Mark Jewelers were. So I bought a bunch. But two that I always look for is Amazing Spider-Man and Hulk. For the reason, I'm trying to get every Todd McFarlane book in a Mark Jewelers. And so far, I'm about 30% of the way done. So right now, I just have Amazing Spider-Man 213 and 232 in Mark Jeweler variants. I paid, I think on average on these books, maybe 7 or $8 a piece. And The Incredible Hulk has that run from Todd McFarlane. I would say the biggest find at that store was a Hulk 330 in a Mark Jeweler variant. This book is the first... Hulk book that Todd McFarlane pencil. No, oh, Christ, this fucking guy. Yeah. I got this for eight bucks. They didn't seem to know what a Mark Jeweler was, I guess. Uh, 334 is also a McFarlane book. 332 also a McFarlane book and a Mark Jeweler. The sad thing about it is, is that I could tell that they got an entire Hulk run in Mark Jeweler's which means at some point they had a Hulk 340 in a Mark Jewelers. So some of the other stores I went to in the area weren't great. Past, future, and present. You saw in that shop they had all those shirts. Well, I picked up this House of Secrets 92 shirt since I don't own the comic and I passed up on getting one and I'm still pissed off about it. I wasn't able to convince any of the stores to give me a better deal for cash, which the West Coast seems to work very well. Every store I go into in the West Coast, I usually say something like, does, does it help if I pay with cash? That usually says, like, will you give me a deal if I pay cash? And most stores will be like, yeah, I'll knock off the tax or, you know, I'll give you $10 off to make up for the tax. You know, something like that. No stores in Florida wanted to go for it. That didn't stop me from buying anything. Some of the higher price things, like those two portfolios, if they were tax-free or they knocked off 10%, I probably would have bought them. Or I would, have, I would have bought the Barry Windsor Smith one if it was like 125 So I went to two garage sales that Saturday morning that were within 10 miles of my parents' house. The first garage sale, oh my God. I walk up to the garage and I ask the guy, hey, you know, I know I'm a little early. Do you mind if I, he's like, no, come on in and look. 
And he has a stack of, I think it was about eight short boxes. And I said, oh, can I start, you know, can I look through the boxes? And he said, no. He points to this stack of papers on top of the box. And I look down and I pick it up. And they're printouts of miniseries that are being sold on eBay. And that's what is the pricing for what's in the box. There was like Tangled Web. It was Spider-Man Tangled Web, the thousand along with the Peter Bag megalomaniacal Spider-Man. And I just saw the price was like $32.95. And I'm like, I looked at like four things and I'm like, oh, all right, thank you. I'm not, I'm not gonna pay eBay prices. And I just left. I wanted to go back at the end of that day and just be, be like, did you sell anything? Because there's no way anybody's paying asking eBay prices at a garage sale. That's not how it works. That's not a garage sale. So the second garage sale I went to, I rolled up and there was already people there and it was supposed to start at 8.30 and I think I got there at 8.15. It was a short box of comics, guy was looking through it and they were chatting. And then when the guy was done, I moved over to look at it and like it was like a half filled short box with like comics kind of falling over each other. So by default, they're all damaged at this point. So I looked through them and they were, they were dollar books. But right next to it, as you saw, there was, <laughs> there was a sheet of paper with a list of graded slabs and prices. And in big bold letters, you see the Hulk one. It was a, a 181 and a 40, I believe. The price was not too bad. I'm sure I could have negotiated if I wanted to spend three grand on a 40 Hulk 181, but then the rest of the slabs didn't really make any sense to me. He was friendly. It was nice to talk to him. I chuckled inside knowing that I had gone to two garage sales and they weren't really garage sales. They were like people having sales on their driveway at prices that you wouldn't consider garage sales. So that was my experience with garage sales. I flew out on Monday, so I decided I would spend like five hours going to stores on my way to the airport. This was a little bit better. I went to a store called Docking Bay 93, a Star Wars reference store, and it was like half gaming, half comics, dollar boxes, which was, was cool to see because it wasn't all garbage, and a wall of trade paperbacks, as you see, and a wall of new books. The guy was really nice. He didn't seem like he had gotten too much inventory in the last year because he said something to me about um, people came and cleaned him out during the pandemic of, of a lot of his amazing Spider-Man. But what I did spot on the wall was one of my favorite comics in the modern age. I, I absolutely love this book. This is Edge of Spider-Verse number five, the first appearance of Penny Parker. And the reason why I read this book in the first place was because it's written by Gerard Way, the lead singer of My Chemical Romance, the creator of The Umbrella Academy, creator of Killjoys. This is a fantastic comic. There's five books in this miniseries. They're all standalone stories with new spider characters. And it's just one of my favorite comics. I have a lower grade copy. This one's probably like a 9496. Only charged me 25 for it. This book's come down a little bit, but $25 is a good price for it. So that was a, a fun little shop to go to. The next shop I went to was called Phil's Comics, I believe. And that was somewhere north of Fort Lauderdale. That was one of those shops that I could have spent hours and hours digging at. I felt bad because I was asking the guys a bunch of questions, but it's natural. I'm looking for things I'm going to ask. He wasn't rude at all. I just feel like he was super busy doing some organizational jobs, but that's a fun store if you want to dig. His prices were pretty good for the most part. I picked up a Star Wars Tales 20 because this is one of the two Jar Jar covers. I have this, but I got to see if this one's in better condition. Otherwise, this will be for sale at a West Coast Wednesday. And a Spawn 275. See Todd, buy Todd, but also I'm not sure if I need this for my run. It was six bucks, so I'm not going to go wrong. So that was Phil's Comics. Oh my God, this one was huge. It was like a combo of like a toy store, a Hot Topic, and a, and a comic store. Now, unfortunately, these types of stores that are almost like something you'd find in a mall, their pricing isn't good. I mean, I, unfortunately, that's it's just the fact of what it is. Everything seemed to be about five to $10 more than what I'd seen in previous stores in Florida. Uh, but you know, you dig enough, you find a good deal. And I did find a copy of Love and Rockets with that classic cover, Love and Rockets number 24 from 1987 for eight bucks. I had sold a copy of this book to a friend of mine and I kind of regretted it. So I picked up one for cheaper than I got it the first time. Overall, that store was really cool to look at. So that's, that's all I got for you this week. Uh, sorry that it feels like it's a negative vibe, but I just can't, I just can't with that state. I do like alligators though. I really like alligators. <laughs> anyway, 
if you want to challenge me with some good stores in Florida, maybe I'll go to some of those stores next time I'm there, which might be a couple years. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. Smash the like. See you on Wednesday. Dave. Keep digging on the way. Let's go. Florida edition. I don't know why this is happening. I'm a god and a monster. <laughs>